In February 2012, Darrenberg began the celebration of 100 years and a thousand stories. Dad never did any work, which is a problem. He, he, he was often ill, but I don't ever remember him doing any actual work. A new picker was started picking and they were picking all the leaves off the vine as well. They didn't realise you only picked the grapes. So the IQ of the picker was quite low and that's what he thought of me at the time, obviously. Really quintessential McLaren Vale. They're quintessential for the wine industry in South Australia. And to be working with a family owned business the way we have for as long as we have, has been a great pleasure. It's a really key part of our DNA and we represent a lot of people from around the world and I think Darenberg amongst my team is, you know, stands out as pretty iconic. The day of celebration begins. Planning started over a year ago. We are having 250 people for dinner on the lawns next to cellar door. There's tables to be set, flowers to be arranged and over 1,000 glasses to be polished. Darrenberg means uh, the best of Australia and uh, when you think about the greatest treasures of Australia you have to come up uh, nearly at the very top, if not the very top, you would find dairy. The wines are great. I mean, that's the bottom line is they are. I mean, Chester's been very lucky. He's inherited a wonderful legacy from, from his father, Darry. And uh, it's great to see Darry and Chester together at this great occasion for 100 years of what is one of Australia's great wineries. The great winemakers express their personalities through their wines. And I think that Chester does that. And Darry, in his quieter, slightly more subdued, but very funny way and very determined way, has done the same thing. Chester and Derry conducted a masterclass for our guests and journalists from around the globe. There were 71 wines to be tasted. Reds back to the late 60s and whites back to the early 80s. The old Rieslings, the 90, you know, and the 81. I mean, spec for me, spectacular, you know. I, I really love this kind of matured, what we call Ferner, you know, Soubois, the French, you know. These aroma structure. This, are, if they get that old, they are so perfect with food, you know, and so versatile. You can drink instead of red, you can drink an old Riesling. Really, absolutely gorgeous. It was not just wines from the museum to be tasted. There were, of course, new labels to unveil, with the 12 2010 Shiraz from Amazing Sights. Everything we do is, is in partnership in trying to get Derenberg out to as many folks in the States as we can, and it's been a hell of a lot of fun. All the food was prepared from local produce on site by our talented team from our restaurant, Darry's Veranda. While our guests retired to freshen up in the afternoon, the final touches were applied to the marquee. There's probably no one else in the Australian wine trade that you would hear more about as you travel around the world. Everywhere you go, people say, oh, you're from Australia, really. Oh, this guy Chester's been here. Do you know Chester? Have you met Chester? Darrenberg is one of the few love marks in the wine world. It is one of those brands that people actually know and follow. There aren't many wineries in the world, including Bordeaux and Burgundy, that actually have that. So Darrenberg to me stands alongside some of the great champagnes, some of the great Bordeaux, as being a love mark that has intense loyalty amongst the people who know it. And that's a great achievement. The dinner was a great chance for old friends to catch up. Chester and Derry told just a few of the 1,000 stories that have made the first 100 years of Darrenberg's heritage so colourful. When I did actually start work at seven years old in the holidays, and I got paid 10 cents an hour 
um, uh, picking grapes or or um, pruning. My, my father's singing out overpaid, and uh, you know, he, I, I don't think I paid tax, no. Um, but uh, I, I think he was right because I reckon I ate more grapes than I put in the bucket. Of course, uh, Dad had planted the vineyard up to about 96 acres when I joined, and. Uh, we were bulk wholesalers. We sent wine to uh, to Burgoyne's and to Emu and to uh, Stephen Smith, the Tatterchiller Company, and uh, and also to a bit of Australian stuff, including Hamilton's, used here. His family used to buy wine from Dad. Dad told me he never paid for it. <laughs> Chester wasn't really into what he does, he wouldn't have made a success of it, but he has. And his father thinks that's wonderful, which is another rare thing between fathers and sons. I think that's just wonderful. You don't you just don't see that very often, you know. I thought how marvellous it is and how well they've all worked to get it to where it is now. My brother and, and Chester, he's done such a lot as well. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. And now we're we getting the rewards. And no birthday party is complete without a cake. And keeping with the winemaking tradition of Darenberg, we had one made in the shape of an old basket press. Yeah.